Hey, what's up guys? It's Gabe from NerdTech, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about text messaging, uh, whether it's manual messages through Go High Level, or if it is an AI chatbot assistant. So obviously I've been using a lot of the AI assistants, whether it's calling or chatbots, and when we're doing texting, if the list is somewhat cold or uh, you know, you're buying data, then sometimes you can have uh, some problems in Go High Level with the new A2P laws. It's very hard to text people and get it to go through. And if you have too many errors or text uh, the numbers that aren't mobiles, then uh, it'll uh, be flagged as errors and then your account will get suspended. So I've had a lot of people come to me, ask me how I'm doing this. So there's a few tricks that I can give you, tricks and tips. And then lastly, we'll go through a small, simple workflow build to show you how to build one of the things that will help you out quite a bit. So uh, definitely uh, at least stay for that. But uh, just to talk about uh, the rules so that you have a good idea of what's happening here. So with A2P, technically carriers don't want you to cold text. They want it to be opted in. They want users to... Uh, give consent that they can receive text messages from your company uh, but it's uh, to my knowledge as of right now it's not really a law it's mostly a rule set by the carriers and then they have the right to be able to filter and block your text messages if you're not following those rules so a lot of people still want to do cold text you still can so uh, some tips on doing that would be number one if you have a big list of numbers you want to make sure and pass it through some sort of phone validator. And phone validators, they'll look at the numbers and they'll tell you whether they're a mobile or a landline. So although Go High Level does have its own internal validation system, the problem with that is most people don't understand is it doesn't actually validate the phone number until the first message is sent. And then it throws an error and then it validates it and then it marks it and you won't text that number again. But the problem is it still throws that error on the initial text message, which is gonna get your account suspended. So we need to pre-validate these numbers to prevent that from happening, pass it through a phone validator, make sure we're only texting mobile numbers only. That's where the majority of errors come from. The second error is a 3003 or a 3005 error is what they call it. You'll see it flagged and those errors uh, mean the phone, it'll say headset out of service. I believe that's what it says. And it could be either a couple things. Literally, the phone that you're calling is out of service. The phone is turned off or it's just not an active line anymore. Uh, so it could be one of those things. So a lot of times when you're buying big lists, you're going to get numbers that aren't active anymore. And that's going to throw an error as well. There's no real way to prevent that other than you just need to be aware of it. And if you're texting too many numbers per day and you're getting a, uh, over, I think they give you a 5% leeway. If you hit that threshold or above, your account's going to get suspended for 24 hours. It, usually from what I've seen, if you text 100 to 200 numbers a day, it stays within that threshold where you're good to go and... Uh, you don't exceed that. If you keep hit, if you keep hitting or exceeding that and get your account suspended so many times, then eventually they're going to shut your account down. So you just need to be careful. And then you'll have to go through the process of, of getting a new account and getting A2P verified. It'll be a, a huge pain. So just be aware of those things. Now, the other thing that gives you an error and that red flags to carriers is too many people replying stop. If carriers uh, see that a lot, basically they're thinking, oh, okay, so, and, and this I think is only a 3% leeway is what they give you. So if more than 3% of your messages are coming back as stop, and, which is not very much at all, so they're being very strict on this, then they're gonna also suspend your account and go eye level. So um, the biggest tip I have for you is actually gonna address that because that's actually one of the biggest problems I see people cold texting, you're going to have, you know, 90 people reply back stop. So one of the rules is, is you have to have opt out language on the first text that goes out. Opt out language is if uh, you don't want to be subscribed to these messages, please reply stop. Go High Level allows you to be able to do a custom opt out message. 
and it still has to have a compliant opt-out word. And a compliant opt-out word is stop or cancel. Um, there's a couple others, but most people just use stop. So my biggest tip for y'all is instead of just saying the word stop, is you can actually alter that opt-out message so it sounds a little bit more personalized. And what I write is, P.S., if I'm bothering you and want me to stop, just reply out. And I put out in all caps and make that the very last word that they see. So out is not an approved opt-out language by the carriers, but stop is. So because we put the word stop in the message, the carriers see that, they notice that we have an approved word, so we're compliant. But we're telling our consumers to reply back out. So when they reply back out, we're going to set up an automation that automatically internally DNDs these people, which will take them out of the list so we don't text them anymore, but it's not going to trigger a red flag on the carriers by them replying back stop. So that's my biggest tip I have to bring you uh, today. I uh, wanted to run through that. A lot of people have asked uh, how do we get past these things, and that is how, and it works really, really good, actually. It's been a huge saver for me. So I'm just going to walk you through real quick how we would build out that workflow and go high level. So start by clicking on create workflow, start from scratch. We're going to add trigger and this is going to be uh, reply, let's see, customer, it's called customer replied. And then we're going to do the filter is going to be the reply channel. Uh, let's see here. or no, it's just gonna be contains phrase, contains phrase. And we're gonna do out. And then we're gonna do, let's put that there. And then we're gonna do another one. Customer replied, contains phrase, out in all caps. Customer replied, contains phrase, or actually we're going to do exact match phrase, so I messed that up. And let me explain why we're going to do exact match. So we're going to go back and change this from contains to exact match. And change this one to exact match. The reason it's important that we do exact match is because, for example, if uh, the customer replies back, yes, I want to sell my house, I just need 30 days to move out. Well, contains means if it has that word anywhere in the phrase, then it's going to DND &D them the way we set this up. Obviously, that person's a motivated seller and they want to sell their house and they just said they need 30 days to move out. So we don't, they're not telling us that they want to unsubscribe. So it needs to be just the exact phrase, which means only that word that they're replying. And the reason why I like to include all these other words here, oops, I always like to type what I, what each one means in the trigger name. So I don't have to click in there and I can see exactly, okay, I have out with a lowercase, out all uppercase and out with a capital O. These are really the only ways if somebody truly wants to respond, reply out and they truly don't want to receive messages for you, they're going to say this word and it's going to be spelled one of these ways. Uh, so that's why I capture all of them. If you only replied out in all caps, then that's the only one it's going to capture. If somebody's lazy and they just reply out, you also want to capture that one as well. So um, that's why I put each variation in there is because we're capturing the exact phrase, not just contains. So then we're going to add plus and we're just going to do DND, enable, and we're going to do a DND for a specific channel and SMS. Now, if you wanted to make sure, technically, when customer applied, it could be for multiple different channels. Oh, yeah, reply channel. Uh, SMS, 
uh, if you just if you don't do reply channel SMS, it could be email, uh, chat widget, Facebook Messenger, which I think is fine anyways. If they truly reply that word, then uh, you know you could DND them for any of those channels. But if you want to make sure it's only for SMS, then you do reply channel SMS, and then you would do the exact phrase of out like that. So then I could go through here and change this to SMS with exact phrase out, SMS exact phrase out, so they each look like that. So then anytime a reply comes through now with it saying out, it's going to DND them for SMS. If you wanted to do other channels, uh, you could include those as well. I personally only do SMS because that's the main channel that we're using to text people. And then I would name this workflow uh, reply out message dnd's contact something that you know uh, what that means publish and save it's pretty much that simple and then one more thing i like to do is i actually like to do an email notification and it's not send email that's going to send to the client it's going to be internal notification type email and then i would do from my business name from email i would always do these as custom values in case i ever change them to user assigned user customer replied out dash and then i like to put the customer name and then i would say this is just an internal notification letting you know your client has replied out to SMS. Then we'll do it again here. Contact, full name. And then I always like to include the phone number in case I wanna like just click to call to see what's going on, see if it was a mistake. And that's really all you need to do. Save that. Now they're gonna get DND and I'm gonna get an internal, internal notification uh, it doesn't happen very often, but occasionally I've seen it happen by mistake. And so if I think it does and I want to reach back out to them, at least I'm aware of that and can know, um, especially if it was like a client that we work a lot with. And if by some chance they accidentally reply back out, I've actually seen people get so many spam messages, they just automatically reply back out without even really paying attention to the message. And then they'll message me back and be like, oh, dang, I, I completely did not realize that was you. Sorry about that. I just thought that that was spam. Can you put me back as an opt-in? I definitely want to know more you know, about your services or whatever. So it, it can happen accidentally. I've seen that happen before. So um, that's all I'm going to show you guys today. Those are pretty much uh, my main tips on SMS. Uh, and so I hope that helps you guys out and you can have better deliverability.